It's the studio of China Media Group, of which CGTN is part, and we are broadcasting live uh, to give you the best picture, the bird's eye view of Macau, which is nicknamed as the Asia's gaming capital. So now what you're looking at is the uh, cockpit, we call it, so you can see the pilots right now. And of course, before we get started, let me introduce you to the crew that we have. And now we are looking at the bird's eye view of Macau. It's getting really dark right now, a little bit foggy today. But the thing is, this will give you a very special feeling of this city. And the lights now are lighting up in the city of the Asia's gaming capital. So, now, uh, now, uh, so this line actually is very busy and the pilots now are talking to the air traffic controller in order to figure out which line that we can fly. So, but the thing is, it is very efficient and the management is really good. So every time, by the minute, actually we're changing the route. We have a set route actually in the first place, but the thing is we need to talk to the air uh, traffic controllers to figure out which one that we can pick. But anyways, we're going to bring you the best view of this city. If you have any questions, please leave your comments on our Weibo, CGTN Weibo, or Twitter, and our app, and Facebook, and also YouTube. Now I can't. Now I can't get back to your questions. But anyways, when I get off this helicopter, I'm going to return. I'm going to go back to your questions as soon as possible. Now what you're looking at is the, uh, the sea, actually, and from afar you can see a tall building. And that tall building is actually one of the most iconic uh, projects or structure in Macau. It is the Macau Tower. Macau Tower is very special. It's around 338 meters tall. If you're not familiar with the uh, meter measurement, that is around 1,000 feet in height from ground level to the highest point. So its observation deck features views and also restaurants and also theaters and shopping malls and the Skywalk X. And now we are approaching the Macau Tower so that you can see that clearly. And another thing that's quite special about this tower is at around 233 meters the Macau Tower tethered sky jump and bungee jump from the tower's outer rim and it's the highest commercial sky jump in the world so that is around uh, around 232 meters and the second highest commercial decelerator descent facility in the world after Las Vegas a stratosphere sky jump at 252 meters and the tower was created by architecture film of Moller Architects and tower is actually one of the members of the World Federation of Great Towers. Now you can see the tower is illuminating. It's a little bit purple and it changes the color. Now it is yellow. It just reminds me very much of the Canton Tower in Guangzhou, also a city in southern China. And also the tower is used for telecommunications and broadcasting. Actually this time China Media Group has set up a uh, receiver, a signal receiver over there, and that is also one of the reasons why you can see this broadcaster from here up in the air. Now we are hovering around the Macau Tower, and then now you can see the tower is changing its color, and now it is purple. So another story is that the uh, Macau Tower is actually managed at the current stage by uh, Panzi Ho. Panzi Ho is a very legendary figure in Macau when it comes to his gaming sector. And earlier I talked to Panzi Ho in an exclusive interview with CGTN. Of course, if you want to know more about Macau's gaming sector, especially the hospitality industry, you can go to CGTN app and you just search Panzi Ho and you can have the full interview, about four minutes, and she shared with us her insights into the service industry of Macau. So now I think you can uh, have a look at the uh, cockpit and you can see our pilots at this moment and they are trying to see uh, what is going on down below and now they are still talking to the air traffic controller to figure out which route 
it's the most suitable and which route that we can pick to give you the best picture. And once again, for those who just joined us, this is CGTN and we are broadcasting live uh, above Macau, to be honest, and now it's around 300 meters above the ground. Now it is getting darker and darker, a little bit foggy, as I said just now, and you can see many of the buildings now are lit up and from afar, and we are leaving the uh, gaming center actually on the right side of the picture you can see a tall building that is uh, golden uh, it is one of the most iconic buildings in macau that is lisboa and now we are hovering around the uh, macau tower once again Okay, so in the meantime, because the pilots are talking to the air traffic controller, we're changing the route, and my technician, my cameraman, just told me that we are going to the ruins of St. Paul's. So that is also one of the most beautiful and must-see place in Macau. So the ruins of St. Paul is the most beautiful place to see in Macau, and also uh, to be visited, it is uh, the top thing to do in Macau. It is also the most easily recognizable image of the city and the ruins are all the remains of the former church of Martyr Day and St. Paul College built between, 96, uh, between 1602 and 1640 but just before we go there and we need to have some history lesson but unfortunately the building actually or the uh, cathedral was destroyed by fire back in 1835 and now we are approaching the ruins of the St. Paul and many people would go there to have their pictures taken and even at their wedding ceremony and they would like to go there to have their wedding photos taken. But it is a rare opportunity to have a look at it from above. I think you can look at it now. Unfortunately, as I said, it was burned down in 1835. So now we can only look at the facade of this building. And now we are uh, swivering to towards the back of it. Actually, it is very interesting. Before I came to Macau, I was always interested and curious about the back of the facade of the St. Paul, the ruins of the St. Paul, until I got here three weeks ago and went back, I went to, and I have circumvented towards the back of it and saw what happened. Uh, it was the living history of Macau. Actually, probably many people didn't know that. It was a college. The College of St. Paul were the first Western University. So basically, in the past, it was a Western University, also the first one in the Far East, and had a complete curriculum ready to prepare the missionary to do work in Japan and the rest of China. So basically, you have to study here Mandarin and Cantonese until you are totally prepared to do missionary in the rest of China and also Japan. So that was the port for you to get into China. Now we're leaving the ruins of St. Paul and this is the bird's eye view of the older district of Macau. It is the living history of Macau and we are hovering around this area and you can see the light is illuminating and it's also very, uh, now it's the uh, very good place actually to now is the very good time and good season to visit this place because it's in December. Usually around December there are so many festivals, Chinese festivals, Portuguese festivals, Western ones. Now it's uh, around Christmas time. So in about seven days in a week it's going to be Christmas time. Now we can see the light also. December is the time for its light festival, very much like the light show. Uh, in Las Vegas if you have ever been there before but now it's not the time I think is about to happen in five minutes or six minutes and we hope that we can stay around this area if the air traffic controller would agree so around uh, every half an hour and we are going to have the light show it's very much like the laser projection um, display on the facade of the ruins of the St. Paul they have different features different characters and also they have the uh, features of the upcoming Christmas and hopefully we can see that pretty soon and we are turning around now you can see now you can see that is still the older district 
of Macau. If you come to Macau, definitely come to this area. Also, that is most the most crowded part of Macau. So once again, if you have any questions, anything about Macau, or my experience, my feeling here in Macau over the past three weeks, and also how or what is it like to broadcast live uh, a live stream for CGTN here in the cockpit of this helicopter or in this makeshift studio, let me know. Okay, so now we're still talking to the air traffic controller and we're changing the route once again because the line, as I said just now, is very busy. Okay, for those who just came to Macau, the first thing that would come to their minds would be the, yeah, we we'll say casinos or is a gaming sector. Uh, but Macau is more than that. It's also a place of fusion of different cultures. Portuguese culture, Cantonese culture, and also the uh, Chinese culture from the eastern part of China. So if you come over, definitely you can have a bite of different cultures, uh, a fusion of different foods and different cultures, different languages. And now we are approaching, I think that is the, uh, the tower. Okay. And uh, now we're approaching the, uh, the lighthouse. So that is also a very important place and very iconic iconic place, one of the iconic places I would say about Macau. So uh, for the general stores of views and a completely different experience in Macau, climb up, they, we call this a Guila Fortress and learn about defending the city and about the Portuguese history in Macau. If you have been to Lisbon and the fortress, we will definitely remind you of the city too. So today, the fortress or the lighthouse is the highest point on the island. And so it is, um, it is a great place from where to have a panoramic views of everything below. So if you want to have a panoramic view of Macau, definitely go there, of course. But now I can give you a panoramic view uh, of this Guia, we call this Guia Fortress, that is Portuguese. So the Guia complex is made of fortress, a chapel and a lighthouse that is not open to the public, uh, but was built much later in 1865. The lighthouse is the oldest modern lighthouse in China. Okay, so now we're leaving the lighthouse and we're turning around. And uh, the night is still young, I have to say. And you can see the shallow waters and you can see over there, there were two islands. And the, uh, so the right part of it, as now you can see on the screen, that is the Macau Peninsula. And the left one, and that is uh, the, we call it the Taipa, and also Kotai Islands. So Macau is a very small peninsula. Once again, for those who probably don't know much about this place, it's only about 30 square kilometers. So it's very easy for you to exhaust this place or finish this place in a day. And then the two islands, as I said just now, actually serve as the extension of this place. Because it's very limited and now, uh, one place is a northern neighbor, I would like to say, on the Chinese mainland, the Hongqin port or the Hongqin area. One kilometer or four square kilometers actually have been leased to Macau for 99 years so that this place wouldn't be that uh, confined and limited as before. Even though this place is very small, its GDP per capita is very high. It's ranked as the second highest in the world according to the International Monetary Fund in uh, 2018 and its unemployment rate is also very low, largely owing to its gaming sector. Uh, it's very much reliant on the gaming sector, which accounts for over half of the city's annual revenue. And the city is trying to lessen its reliance on the gaming industry by boosting entrepreneurship and also trying to set up a stock exchange, which is very, very new. It is yet to be announced, but it is happening pretty soon. And we'll see these two policies and mechanisms change the Macau's economic dynamic pretty soon. So, if you have any questions, please leave a comment, as I said just now, on CGCN Weibo or app or our Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. I'll get back uh, to your questions as soon as possible when I get off the helicopter. It's a little bit confined 
here and a little bit clustered in this makeshift studio in the helicopter of China Media Group. Uh, but it's very comf uh, comfortable, or uh, more comfortable as I thought I have to say. Now we are on our way. Where are we going right now? Okay. Yeah, I was talking to my cameraman just now. So now we are on our way to uh, Koh Tai and also Tai Pa, and that is the extension island, I would just say, of the Macau Peninsula. This place is also very beautiful because many of the high-end hotels have moved, have been moved to this area. So that is why you will find this area more brighter than the Macau Peninsula, which is the older part of the city. So here you can find Wing Palace and also MGM and also Studio and also Venetian of course. Uh, many of the high-end hotels have moved over here. And uh, there is one thing more that I would like to mention is that we have the uh, light, light rail trains over here which is very new. It was opened in December just a few weeks back actually. That is connecting the extension islands of the Macau Peninsula and Macau, which could definitely cut back to the time travel or the commute time between the islands and also the older districts of Macau, because many people actually would commute between these two islands every day, every time. And there were three bridges actually that would just link the Macau Peninsula and the extension islands, the Koh Tai and Taipa, I'd like to say. It is very bright and now you can see the sector uh, angular building or area and that is the uh, light, rail, light rail railway station here. It is also very bright over there. Uh, up on the uh, right corner I can see that building. I think that is the Venetian Hotel. That is a very... Okay, now you can see the cockpit and uh, uh, I think you can see me and also my cameraman here. My cameraman at this moment is very busy and he's talking both to the studio on the ground and the pilots who are talking to the air traffic controller right now. Very busy here actually, though you can enjoy the beautiful scenery, but actually there were five people in the cockpit and we're working. We're working, we're working uh, by the clock and it is really, really hectic for us to be honest. But now you can see the one of the most beautiful um, scenery here about Macau. Now we are hovering around Macau, the University of Macau. University of Macau is very special. The University of Macau campus is located in the east of Hongqing Island in Guangdong province. Probably you might be asking why the University of Macau is located uh, in Guangdong province on the Chinese Mainland. As I said just now, Macau is a very small place. It's only around 30 square kilometers. So uh, its northern neighbor actually leased this land that is around one, kil one uh, square kilometers to Macau. And that is why they moved the Macau University to this place. And University of Macau has established three key or state key laboratories very important research institute in Macau and also around the world. And now we are approaching the University of Macau. By the way, just as a reminder, so in two days, which is the day after tomorrow, and we are going to the University of Macau to have a live stream over there to give you a well-rounded understanding of, that, of this university. So we have done some research, probably some spoiler, spoiler alert here. So we're going to talk about some of the research they have done and also about the college life that is a very very special. And a reminder of the education system here which is very special. Uh, education in Macau actually doesn't have a single centralized set of standards or curriculum and individual schools follow different educational models including Chinese, Portuguese, Hong Kong and British systems. And for this university, it kind of follows the Portuguese system and the British system. That is why they have the college system, which is very unique in the British education system. 
and the government provides 15 years of free education for all residents enrolled uh, in publicly run schools and subsidizes the situation for students in private schools. So students at the secondary school level uh, studying in neighboring areas of Guangdong are also eligible for tuition subsidies. And uh, now we are still hovering around the University of Macau, which is very beautiful because it is uh, surrounded by the sea. So very beautiful surroundings and the most, uh, the brightest place I have to say, I think that is the football pitch. Okay, and from here, actually, you can see the Hongqin port of the Hongqin area, which actually is part of Guangdong province on the Chinese mainland. And from above, these two places, Macau and the Chinese mainland, they are actually separated only by a thin line, the shallow waters, and on both sides of the sea, and people from both sides actually could see each other. But the thing is, because of historical reasons, the two places have different political systems. They have also very different economic systems. Okay, but still, they are under the one country, two system policy. Just to make sure that probably some people don't understand, especially people from overseas don't understand the one country, two systems. One country, that means, so both Hong Kong and Macau and the mainland China actually are under the uh, governance of the Chinese mainland and the central government. But the thing is, Macau and Hong Kong, they would hold their original economic system and political system. And that is basically, roughly, the understanding of the one country, two systems policy. That is also why Macau is so special. And Macau is about to celebrate its 20th anniversary of its return to China. Now, we are towards where, where are we going right now? Okay, so now we're going back to the Macau Peninsula. Now you can see the beautiful buildings just now. Uh, before we took off, actually, it was not this stock. And now it's uh, pitch dark, and that is why you can see the bright buildings flashing now at this moment. Flashy buildings, everlasting fusion of Macanese and also Cantonese culture. Very beautiful. <coughs> now I think I'm going to stop talking for a little bit so that you guys could enjoy the beautiful view from above here. Okay, so now I think we're officially uh, here above the Macau Peninsula right now and down below you can see two bridges and those are the two bridges I talked about just now and I think just uh, down below here uh, perpendicular and you perpendicularly you can see that, bu uh, that bridge and that is actually one of the most iconic bridges in <coughs> Macau that is connecting the Macau Peninsula and the extension islands of uh, Koh Tai and Taipa. And now you can see over there, that is the Macau Tower. Very beautiful, it's changing its color once again, it is blue. So definitely, if you come over, you can go there and can, if you are not afraid of heights, go do the sky jump, of course. And now it is getting brighter and brighter. I think the, mo the brightest part of the Macau Peninsula will be the casino center. So many people actually would come here for gaming, uh, including many people from the Chinese mainland and many people from Hong Kong. And especially people from Hong Kong, they would come here usually over the weekends because it's very near. And also because the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, actually, that was newly opened in 2018. And people just come here in half an hour, which used to be four hours, actually. 
so it cut down and to cut back on the uh, total hours of four hours to half an hour so it's easier for them to get into this area and also it kind of boosted the gaming industry here and of course as I said Macau is not simply relying on its gaming sector is trying to change the status quo at this moment and over there you can see that purple building that is one of the most famous uh, gaming centers here or the gaming companies here and we are passing by that building and over here you can see uh, this you can oversee okay so over here at the very far end I think you can see the blue light and we are now approaching that part of the city it is a very special part of this place why it is special because uh, CG, uh, CGTN and also uh, China Media Group actually we have set up some makeshift studios over there and at this moment the reason why you can see this broadcast that is uh, going on live up here up here in the helicopter is because we have studios makeshift studios over there so that they can be connected to Beijing okay I think that is almost the end of our trip in the air and of course once again this is CGTN and if you want to know anything about Macau its gaming industry its tourism sector and also some of the most high-end hotels also the most iconic places that you would love to visit just like just let me know leave your comments down there on Weibo Facebook Twitter anyway and I'll get back to your questions as soon as possible after I get off this plane so I'm gonna see you next time bye bye enjoy your day